this day shows that the changes that took place in 100 years, okay, those changes happened from 1900 to 1920. Again, one is the five ratio. Now you say that, prove it. Look at this one. Old story, calculator. Okay? In olden times, we had a basically pebbles to count. Slide rule. How many of you have used slide rule or seen slide rule? Okay? Till 1974, when I graduated, I graduated with the slide rule. There was no calculator out of it. And there was no computer either. It was slide rule. Every day, all day. Then what we have these days in our pocket, the cell phone, is million times faster than the old mainframe computer. The power in your pocket is like a mainframe that you are carrying. So, just this again, in 1987, okay, when I joined Purdue University, I was in the design area, I was a design engineer. They hired me because there is a need to design courses. We were using IBM 8086. I don't think any of you has used IBM 8086. <laughs> it was a big computer those days. And it did not hire a hard drive. When I tell this story to my students, they say, what? No hard drive? There was no hard drive. I used to teach design courses. I put a floppy in. We had five and a quarter floppies. Draw it. Put another one in. And do damage things so on and so forth. So when I joined, and they told me we're going to upgrade these computers, we're going to put a memory in there. So we bought 10 megabytes memory card, which was about $750. And you can buy a laptop, a PC now for $750. Mm -hmm. okay. Then <clears throat> uh, 2013, again, the standard hard drive size was 500 gigabytes and standard memory 4 gigabyte and the price of the computer was 850. This is the first computer that I bought in 2013. Now let's look at the, <coughs> the process speeds. Okay. IBM 8086 that I was referring to having a maximum speed of 60 megahertz. All these 60 megahertz. Then came the Pentium series. Okay. We were the first department in the university to have a Pentium computer because we need a lot of crunching power. We use a lot of CAD packages. We get the best computers in the university. Pentium was a big one with 400 megahertz speed. Then came Apple and then Intel Core and now Intel i7 is at 4.7 gigahertz. If you do a rough calculation, from in last 33 years, the speed has gone roughly about 292 times. That's roughly 9 times per year. Now, what is going to happen in the future? So, 5 years from now, 2023, speeds could go up to 211 gigahertz. And then, another 5 years, we could go up to close to 1 terabytes. Imagine the speed. How fast we're going. And that's the technology we'll be seeing in our future. <coughs> now, take the internet speed. In 1992, when I started using the um, internet, it was done the dial motor, we used to call it. You know the speed? Two kilobits per second. Okay. And then, 2013, it went to two megabytes. And now, in 2013, Amazon tested a one gigabit per second line. And then the further research in England has gone up to 1.4 terabits per second. Now, numbers are okay, but look at the applications. If you download a Hindi movie especially, it takes you half an hour. Other than the classic number. But with these speeds, 44 movies a second, that means you click, press the key, you turn your head, you have 44 movies downloaded. That is the speeds we're going to have in the near future. And we need to get ready for the speeds. We'll talk about color a little bit later. Now, uh, look at uh, our speed. The general speed that we use at homes 
is roughly an eight year age two MBS, while South Korea is the highest, which is roughly 33.5 GBS. Learning, I think uh, uh, we have the same image here, okay? Yeah, it's basically accumulating knowledge, experience, so on and so forth. But information sources, one is our own mind, our own brain. So what we have is a conscious and subconscious level. If somebody wants ask me what's the definition of density, based on what I remember, based on what I've learned, I go to maybe my subconscious level and that gives me the definition of the density. Then we refer to books. Okay, now the model has changed. Okay, now we have, we can use uh, voice, for example, or we can type. If we go to Google, and I would know what density is or what the formula is. I can type density. I'll get the information. Now we can also get the voice command. Okay, so many kids do it. Okay, uh, to tell you a story, uh, I have four grandkids, and uh, one of my granddaughters, she was in fifth grade. So when I go there, I ask them these questions, math, science, all these. So I said, Leela, what is density? She said. Well, Alexa, <laughs> density. <laughs> Alexa, density. Yeah. But I said, well, I don't understand. Explain me. What is this mass body in the volume? She told her younger sister, Serena, she said, get those two points. Okay? She puts them in the water. One sinks, one doesn't. She says, Dadaji, do you understand what density is? I said, no. Okay. <laughs> then she explains the relationship between volume and the weight. Because heavier, the steel item, it has more density, it's heavier, it sinks, so and so forth. So the point I'm making is, these kids today are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Okay? Hamesh hum kehte hai, ye bachya deo koop hai, wo galat kar hai. Okay? Actually, they are not doing it wrong. We're not understanding that. We're not fulfilling their requirements. They're trying for change, believe me. Because I teach, I meet students on a regular basis. I see my grandkids now, and I tell you, they are trying for a change. We better listen to them before there's a big, big issue. Yes, the crime problem. It's not that they are born criminals. The society has made them criminals by not listening to them, not fulfilling their needs. So we got to do that.